G'day. I have a dilemma. I like Gloop and like to buy a lot of it. Uh, but the trouble is, the price of Gloop varies drastically from day to day. Right now it's about a dollar per pound, but I've seen it go up to something like five, ten dollars per pound. I've seen it go down to cents per pound. All over the place. So I'm not actually too interested in how much Gloop I purchase, but I'm going to do this over the next number of days. And by the end of those days, I like to have the best deal possible, the best price per pound that I bought. And I've, I've got two options in mind. Option one, maybe the next number of days, I'll just buy one pound of Gloop no matter what, no matter how much it prices. So one day I might pay $3 for that pound, next day I might pay 80 cents for that pound, then I'll pay $10 for that pound the next day. So at the end of some number of days, I'll certainly have a good number of pounds of Gloop at some price. What deal would I get from that? Or option number two, instead of fixing the amount I buy, let's fix the amount I pay. So I'm going to buy $1 worth no matter what. So one day I might get a pound of Gloop for that $1. Next day when I buy $1, I might only get one and a half, I might get one and a half pounds. Next day I might only get like a third of a pound of Gloop. So the amount I get will vary from day to day. But in the end, I will have some Gloop and I'll have bought, spent some money on it. So my question is, which of these two options gives me gives the best price per pound deal over a number of days. Option number one, buying one pound no matter what each day. Option number two, buying one dollar's worth no matter what each day. So I'd like to address this question. Um, since I've got no information about what the price is going to be from a day to day, uh, let me just give it a name. So on day number i, let's uh, let xi be the number of dollars for one pound of gloop. So let's say on day i, I'm going to expect to pay xi dollars for that one pound of gloop. All right, so let's analyze each of these two options and see what my deal is in the end in terms of dollars paid per pound. Option number one, buy one pound of gloop each day. So let's suppose I do this for n days. All right, I'm being a little abstract here. I hope we can handle that. If I buy one pound of gloop each day, the number of pounds I have is certainly n pounds. The question is, how much do I pay for it? Well, on day one, I pay x one dollars for that first pound. On day two, I pay x two dollars for that second pound. On day three, I pay x three dollars or up to x n dollars. All right, so there we have it. So the, my cost per pound ratio is x one plus x two plus x n dollars for n pounds of gloop. So there's my dollar per pound ratio following option one. Maybe that's good. Option number two, I'll do it in blue. Right, so, so this again, let's imagine n days of this. Uh, dollars, how much will I pay? Well, if I'm paying $1 each day, obviously I'm going to spend n dollars after n days. How many pounds do I get for that? All right, so I'm going to go up to my little equation. If I'm spending $1 per day, this equation at the top is not very helpful right now. Let me divide both sides by xi. So that tells me left side divided by xi, $1 is 1 over xi pounds. Right, that gives me that tells me how many pounds I get for uh, one dollar. One dollar gives me one x i pounds. All right, so on day one I get one over x one pounds. On day two I get one over x two pounds, or that the last day one over x n pounds. So what's my dollar per pound ratio here? Well, it's n dollars for this particular formula. Oh heavens, this is complicated. But there's my cost per pound formula following option two. Actually, uh, if you look at the formula on the left, that might be familiar to a lot of people. This is actually called the arithmetic mean, or the numbers x1 up to xn, and that sort of certainly arises a lot in mathematics. Uh, the, the Greeks of ancient times were actually very aware of this quantity as well. It arises in many contexts as well, and they gave it the name the harmonic mean. They actually called uh, numbers that are one over something, these are the, they're basically called the harmonic numbers, the reciprocals of, of integers are the harmonic numbers, they have something to do with uh, ratios of hitting metal bars in, in uh, blacksmith shops, according to Pythagoras. Anyhow, so I'm wondering now, which of these is the better deal? Does the arithmetic mean give me a smaller number than the harmonic mean, or does the harmonic mean give me a smaller number than the arithmetic mean? Whichever one of these numbers is smaller gives me the better deal. So what I want to do is compare this formula with this formula. Is this one bigger than, is this one less than, is it equal to, or maybe it's impossible to tell. All right. Uh, oh, this is going to be complicated, so you have to bear with me on this one. How can we tell which of these numbers is better? Maybe uh, maybe this, it varies. actually depends what the values x1 up to xn really are. Let's find out. There might be an inequality. Now, I'm going to just use a little sort of a clever thinking here. 
If there's an F between them, multiplying both sides by a positive number will not change the, the truth or falseness of that inequality. Now, since everything here is positive, n is a positive number, all my quantities here, x1 up to xn are a positive number, I'm going to actually multiply both sides by n, and that won't change my analysis of what the inequality between them should be. And I don't like this weird denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides by this weird de denominator as well. So I'm going to multiply that side by the weird denominator and multiply this side by the weird denominator. All right, so that's still not changing my question. Whatever inequality exists between my transformed version is what's going on between these original versions. But the nice thing about this is that I can get rid of this sort of fractions within fractions business, get rid of this, this horrible fractions with fractions, and that means I'm really asking to compare x1 plus x2 plus xn times 1 over x1 plus 1 over x2 plus 1 over xn with n squared, n times n. I'm wondering if that's greater than, less than, equal to, or maybe it varies. All right, so analyzing this red inequality is logically equivalent analyzing my original two terms as an inequality. All right, so I'm wondering, is the harmonic mean a better deal? Is it smaller? In which case, I'm wondering if I've got this guy going on. Is option two better? This is, refers to option two. This guy refers to option one being better. Um, which do we have? All right. How on earth am I going to deal with this messy algebra here? 